In this experiment, we're going to try and uh, compare a regular air stone versus uh, uh, splitting the hydrogen and oxygen in the water. Uh, basically, a simple uh, electrolysis process. Here's what we're going to need to start. Um, these are just things we found around in the garage. So, in a couple of uh, actually, you can use anything you want. We're just going to try and mount two electrodes, an anode and a cathode, and uh, see if we can uh, run some power through the water and uh, spit the hydrogen and uh, elect the oxygen. Then we're going to try and remove the uh, hydrogen just to leave the oxygen in there. So we got uh, net cups, two inch, two containers, an air pump, uh, and a stone, and the uh, the hose, we got to uh, drill in some bits to uh, drill some holes, hole saw to put a hole on top. Uh, the solder I haven't figured out yet, but I have some uh, regular aluminum screen there. I'm going to try and see if we can connect some uh, copper uh, wire to it later. And we might need a few more things, but uh, this is how we're going to start it. No sense really, we go through this, it's a pretty uh, straightforward process and if you're going to try it, you're going to do it a different way anyway, so here's me just trying to put together some items. Now there's no way to really solder copper to aluminum, I mean if we had like a stainless steel screen, maybe we could uh, use some flux and silver solder. But uh, I'm not sure the solder or the copper is going to stand up to the oxidation and reduction going on in the water. So we might try and crimp it later. I'm not sure. But uh, we'll see. Ah, I guess uh, I'm going to go with um, solder. But, uh, I'm just going to put some solder on one side and solder on the other so it uh, kind of holds the screen in there. These are just some PVC pieces so that we can uh, remove the, uh, the hydrogen gas and just leave the oxygen in there. Not sure if this is going to work yet, but uh, we're going to give it a go. If uh, you drill your holes the hole, so make sure you use the right uh, size. I, I use a two and a quarter and uh, have to fix that. The uh, nutrient solution is exactly the same. We're going to run it right at around 400 parts and then at a uh, pH of uh, 6.0. Uh, here's our first test. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but we're getting tiny little bubbles off of the, uh, the screen in there. Uh, so I guess it's working. I'm not sure what's happening, but uh, that's the anode side, so we're getting an oxidation of something. Whether that's the aluminum, or the oxygen, or the copper, or any one of the nutrients in there. So, But we're getting some kind of reaction. And on the cathode side, we're actually getting some kind of reduction. Not sure what it is either, but uh, we're hoping we're getting the, uh, the oxygen and the, uh, the hydrogen in the oxidation and reduction. But, uh, well, I guess it tests fine, so we got to go select a uh, couple of seedlings. I'm trying to find two ex uh, close to exact as possible number of leaves, size of leaves, general size in itself, and general health. So here they are. We got uh, two of the closest size and number of leaves that I could find. And uh, we're going to start it up. Okay, there they are you know, on my little, I guess, seedling table. Uh, it's under, uh, I guess, a uh, metal halide uh, bulb. We're running a uh, 7200 Kelvin. Uh, I don't know if it's a good idea. With that, uh, with that temperature, we're probably just going to grow algae. But uh, we're going to try it at 7200 because that's where my little seedlings are at. And, uh, we need to leave that there for a couple of days. 
Day two, no noticeable change. The water in the uh, airstone side is getting a little darker. Uh, I guess the airstone side, the leaves look a little greener and it's getting a little larger. So, looks like we're getting more group on the airstone side. So, nothing really happening on the uh, electrolysis side. Oh, yes, I removed the. Uh, that little uh, connector uh, and the other change is I added a uh, little transformer there the battery didn't last that long but we're running 12 volts about uh, was that 400 milliamps I guess we could crank it up but uh, that, that should do for now um, Nothing much to report. That's that looks about uh, almost even. Just a little edge to the uh, airstone side. Okay, here's day three. Um, whatever is happening happening on the oxidation side, it uh, it pretty much oxidized the copper wiring, and it pretty much turned that uh, aluminum screen really really brittle. So I uh, stripped off a little bit more of the copper wiring and wrapped it around a stainless steel bolt and uh, stuck it in there and we'll see how long that lasts. I'm guessing though not very as that copper wire will oxidize quite quickly I guess. But, uh, oh, and we changed the waters on both of them just to keep it even. That's the end of day three. Here we go, day four. Uh, in one day, the I don't know what's happening on the electrolysis side on the right there, but that water is not looking good at all. Um, I'm, I'm guessing we're either oxidizing and reducing something in, in the nutrient solution, and uh, it's probably a little toxic to the plant because that plant there on the right side, the electrolysis side, and the older leaves are turning yellow and the stem seems to be getting weak and they're getting a little tipped or I'm not sure if you can see it but uh, it looks like the pattern okay we're back here we made some changes and the water is really bad we're still on day four uh, we changed the water and yes the uh, the copper wire oxidized right through. So, what we got now is two stainless steel rods. They're wrapped with the copper wire and encased in hot glue and stuck back into a little plastic block. So, whatever's happening that uh, it shouldn't be able to oxidize or oxidize the copper wire. And we've got nice clean water in both of them again. So, uh, here we go, a little better picture, you can see what's happening, we should be getting twice as much bubbles on the uh, cathode side on the right there, and, or half the amount of bubbles on the left, the yellow side, but uh, yeah, I guess that is what's happening, so I guess it's a good chance we are getting oxygen and, uh, and hydrogen gas in there. Not sure if we're gonna vent that hydrogen gas yet, but uh, we'll just leave this for now and see what happens. Here's a little picture of some of the other seedlings. They're getting quite large. These two guys are falling behind a little bit. Not sure why that is, but uh, definitely the one on the left. The uh, airstone is larger, and uh, the one on the right uh, looks like it's uh, something a little bit. Here we go, day five. We uh, we added some little rocks on top uh, to help with the algae grow, and definitely now the uh, airstone on the left is two or three times larger, darker, and thicker. 
a much more healthy looking than the one on the right. But uh, the one on the right is still recovering from whatever whatever toxic uh, substance they had in the water there. So it uh, looks like it's coming back slowly, but uh, definitely with the one on the left. The uh, airstone is winning by far at the moment. Day six, uh, nothing much. We uh, we changed the water again, and we put the uh, PVC pipe back in there to get the hydrogen gas, because uh, I think that's what's causing the water to get really dirty. And nothing much to report. The electrolysis uh, seedling is getting stronger now, but still falling way behind the, uh, the airstone one. Day 7. I changed the light because a lot of my seedlings were starting to get leggy and I, I forgot about it. So we switched to a 5000 Kelvin uh, bulb. And we got a lot of growth there. You see the roots? on the, the airstone side and nothing on the uh, electrolysis side. It also looks like we're getting some maybe algae or some kind of bacterial growth there. It's probable, I mean, we had a nice 7200 Kelvin light in there, so uh, we're going to grow something in there. But we definitely got two roots growing on the airstone side and nothing on the electrolysis side. Here we go, day 10. We're going to call it already because I don't think anything is going to happen that's going to surprise me now. Definitely the airstone guy is the winner, no doubt. I mean, he's got quite a bit of roots forming down there and absolutely no roots in the electrolysis side. Um, plant has recovered from whatever toxicity problem it had before. Uh, but uh, definitely not even close to the airstone side. The airstone guy is ready to go outside. This is really healthy, it's dark green. Leaves are thick, stem is thick. And the one on the right is pretty much exactly the same, just smaller. Um, so I think that's going to be it. Uh, I got this idea from those guys at O2 Grow. I use it the electrolysis to uh, add more of oxygen in the water. But uh, apparently their system must be way different from just a simple old battery and uh, you know, two rods in there. Because uh, it definitely is not working. 